Mass Effect Andromeda is a nice entry point for new players to the series, because you can go into the game with no knowledge of the story from previous games and still have an enjoyable experience while not feeling totally lost about what's going on. Today I'm going to be breaking down the events in Andromeda's story and give you a rundown of what happens as well as explain the ending. For the sake of time, I'm going to be avoiding several subplots regarding the backstory of Ryder's crew and companions and focusing on events in the main story surrounding the Andromeda Initiative, Ryder, and the Ket. It should go without saying, but be warned, massive spoilers ahead. My name is Cody and welcome to Split Screen. The story of Mass Effect Andromeda revolves around something known as the Andromeda Initiative. The Initiative's goal was to leave the Milky Way Galaxy and head to the Helios Cluster in the Andromeda Galaxy to settle planets known as Golden Worlds. Golden Worlds are planets in the Helios Cluster that were either the strongest possible candidates for settlement or had resources that would help the Initiative survive. The races from the Milky Way galaxy that would make up the settlement efforts of the Initiative were placed in cryogenic stasis on vessels known as Arcs, and they were to remain there until they arrived at the Initiative's hub world known as the Nexus. The Nexus is a giant space station that was sent ahead of the main Arc fleet, and it was designed to serve as temporary housing for colonists before they were to be shipped out to outposts on Golden Worlds. Each arc contained a Pathfinder who was designated with finding suitable outpost locations for his or her respective race on the Golden Worlds. In game, you play as either Scott or Sarah Ryder, twins from the Milky Way galaxy who happen to be members of the Pathfinder's team. The human Pathfinder is Alec Ryder, your father. Your character is awoken aboard the human Ark the Hyperion, and after a brief medical checkup, the Ark strikes a cosmic anomaly known as the Scourge. The incident knocked out the Hyperion's communication system and caused an issue forcing the medical staff to place your sibling in a coma. With no ability to contact the Nexus, your father Alec makes the decision to proceed to humanity's golden world, which is known as Habitat 7. You gear up and head to Habitat 7 with the rest of the Pathfinder team to scout the planet to see if it's a viable option for settlement. On your way to the surface, a powerful storm destroys your shuttle and you set out to find the rest of the Pathfinder team. While searching Habitat 7, you spot a giant metal tower that's causing the storms which are ravaging the planet's surface. Ryder also encounters a hostile enemy race that we later learn are known as the Ket. After reuniting with your father and making your way to the tower, your father is able to interface with the tower using his simulated adaptive matrix AI or SAM to stop the storms on the planet's surface. Before you're able to celebrate, a blast resonates from inside the tower and destroys your helmet, causing you to start suffocating on the planet's surface. Your father places his helmet on you and transfers his AI to you. You're successfully brought to the Hyperion, but your AI implant overloads causing cardiac arrest and killing you briefly. You awaken to learn that your father sacrificed his life for you, that the Sam AI is now deeply entangled in your mind, and that your father chose you to be humanity's new Pathfinder. After these revelations, we see the leader of the Ket, the Archon, for the first time. He scans the area at the tower on Habitat 7 that Ryder's father was able to interact with and sees a glimpse of Alec Ryder, but is unable to interface with the technology there. After Habitat 7, Ryder and his team make their way to the Nexus. At the Nexus, they learn that the Hyperion is the only Ark that's made it to the Nexus, and that the rest of the Arcs are missing. After receiving a ship known as the Tempest, they head to Habitat 1, Eos, to attempt to get the initiative back on track. On Eos, Ryder and the crew encounter more Ket as they make their way to another ancient alien structure similar to the one that killed Ryder's father on Habitat 7. After interfacing with the tower, Ryder encounters an Asari named PB who informs the crew that the ancient alien tech is actually the remnants of something much bigger. That's why she refers to their technology as remnant tech. 
After exploring a remnant vault and restarting the system, the vault begins to remove the deadly radiation that made Eos difficult to settle. The team is shown a map of the Helios Cluster that displays the location of the other remnant vaults, and they deduce that the vaults are actually designed to terraform planets in the cluster and make them suitable for living. They notice one vault on the map appears to be active and decide to head there to investigate, but before leaving Eos, Ryder establishes the settlement of Prodromos, which is a huge victory for the initiative. The team leaves Habitat 1 to head for the location of the active vault, but on the way they're stopped by the Archon and a fleet of Ket ships. Before the Ket could capture the crew, however, they escape by having the Tempest fly through the Scourge. Once out of the Ket's grasp, they arrive at the location of the active vault, Aya. Aya is home to the Angara, a race native to the Helios Cluster. You learn that the Angara have a resistance that are fighting the Ket. The Ket appeared in the Helios Cluster roughly 70 to 80 years ago and have been kidnapping Angara. Those who are taken never return. You ask to investigate the vault, but you're told that it was sealed and hidden, and that the only person that can help you is the Mosha. The Mosha is the most revered scientist among the Angara, and she was recently abducted by the Ket. An Angara resistance fighter named Jal joins the Tempest crew, and Ryder sets out to rescue the Mosha. You make your way to a Ket facility, and while you're there, you learn that the kidnapped Angara are being transformed into Ket soldiers through a process which makes them the Exalted. The Ket use this process to multiply and replenish their armies. The process involves taking desirable genetic traits from other life forms and splicing them with the Ket genome. This process transforms the victim, mutating their genes with Ket DNA, turning them into Ket. The Ket that originally came to the Helios Cluster are an expedition force that came to exalt all life forms there. The Ket view themselves as genetically superior and believe becoming exalted is a sacred gift of self-development. Once you rescue the Mosha, she takes you to the Remnant Vault on Aya, and you learn that the central controls for the network of terraforming vaults is located in a place called Meridian. The Mosha tells you that the Archon knows where Meridian is, and has a Remnant artifact containing a map to Meridian. Ryder makes the decision to infiltrate the Archon's flagship to take the artifact. Once you discover the Archon ship, you find that he's captured and tethered the Solarian Ark. After infiltrating the Solarian Ark and awakening the Solarian Pathfinder, Ryder and crew fight their way through the Ket flagship. Before they can reach the artifact, they're captured by the Archon, who takes a sample from Ryder to learn the secrets of accessing Remnant Tech. Sam kills Ryder momentarily so everyone can escape from the trap. After being revived, Ryder continues forward and retrieves the artifact and uses it to find the coordinates to Meridian. The Andromeda Initiative doesn't want Ryder going to Meridian, even though it's the key to the terraforming network. Ryder and the Tempest crew head anyways with the assistance of some Nexus scientists and something called Ghost Technology. Once inside what they believe to be Meridian, Ryder learns that the Remnant Tech was created by an ancient race called the Jardan. The Jardan created the entire terraforming network, and they're also responsible for the deployment of the Scourge that we see throughout the cluster. The Scourge came from a weapon deployed by the Jardan, but we're not really sure if it was deployed due to infighting amongst one another or because of some sort of outside threat. It's at this time that we also learn the Jardan experimented with creating sentient life, and that the Angara are actually creations of the Jardan. Meridian has the power to terraform planets and create life, and the Archon wants to use it to destroy life if they won't allow themselves to be exalted. Finally, Ryder activates Meridian only to learn that the facility isn't actually Meridian and that the Meridian engine has been moved. After narrowing down the search by scanning the Scourge, Ryder makes his or her way back to the facility that they thought was Meridian, and they're finally able to get the coordinates to the Meridian engine. It's a giant planet-sized location created by the Jardan. Before being able to leave, 
Ryder is mentally decimated by the Archon, who learned of the Sam implant and its ability to use remnant tech through the sample that he took back on his flagship. The Archon made his way to the Nexus, took control of the Sam AI, and he also kidnaps your sibling, who is now awake from a coma. The Archon intends to use their implant combined with Sam to be able to interface with the remnant tech on Meridian. At this point, we learn that Ryder is still capable of interacting with the remnant tech without Sam, but it causes damage. Ryder and the Tempest crew head into Meridian and confront the Archon. During the battle, Arc Hyperion is crashed into the surface of Meridian. Now, once we reach the Archon, he joins with the Remnant Tech, and with our siblings' help, we're able to defeat him. After the Archon is dead, Meridian activates and begins terraforming planets within the cluster. We get a very short dialogue scene where we get to choose what we tell the Nexus about what's next. And now, after the credits, we do get to see a pretty interesting scene where we see the promise of the Ket overlooking the breach of Meridian, indicating that the Ket are still going to be a threat in Andromeda, and that the promise is now leading the Ket forces. The promise was in a cutscene earlier in the game, scolding the Archon for his obsession with Remnant Tech. I'm assuming we'll learn more about the Ket as well as the plans of the promise as we move forward. Now, she's arguably more terrifying as she seems strictly bound by Ket customs, and she wants to focus exclusively on the mission of exalting all off in the system. Well, anyways, that wraps up Mass Effect Andromeda's story explained. But before I go, I want to ask you guys a huge favor. These story explained videos, they take a ton of time to make. So if you enjoyed it or if you guys found it helpful at all, please be sure to leave a like. It really does help us out here a great deal. Also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more content. But anyways, I'm going to get out of here. My name is Cody, and I'll see you guys next time.